Thank you for joining me. I'm Sherry from Sunflowers and Petals. Today we'll be discussing what goes into designing women's cycling apparel. If you like what you hear, be sure to hit the like button below and also subscribe. I'm so excited today. With me is Julie Pitts, founder of Jules Thread. Welcome, Julie. Thanks for having me. So I remember a few years back, I was riding down one of these country roads and a friend happened to be riding the other direction with this amazing kit. And we stopped and we chatted and she told me it was Jules Threads and I had never heard of you. And now I have four or five year kits. This morning I'm rocking the dots. So uh, it's one of my favorites. So I wanted to start out with what's your history with cycling? Are you a shredder? Are you a roadie? Are you a gravel grinder? What kind of rider are you? I do it all. Um, I actually started out mountain biking for the first year and I believe it was 1999. So it was a long, long time ago. I'm what, 20 plus years into riding. And after mountain biking for a little while, I, got a road bike and I thought, wow, this is so fast and smooth <laughs> compared to mountain biking. Um, so for a very long time, I did only road riding and even raced for several years. And um, that caused some burnout for me. Um, too many uh, races, too little fun. <laughs> and uh, not saying that I was very good at it. I just raced because you know, that's what you do um, sometimes to figure out where you are in the cycling world. But um, after my husband had a, a pretty bad injury on his road bike, um, we kind of had to slow down life and I got back into mountain biking and it has um, been my biggest love affair with the bike since then. I am definitely a mountain biker by heart um, because I just love the whole vibe of mountain biking. Um, but I love having the road bike as something different so that I don't get burnt out on anything anymore. Okay. And, um, when gravel riding hit the scene, it was like, well, this is the best of both worlds, right? Um, as a roadie, you know, you can move pretty fast on a gravel bike. You don't have to, you know, struggle as much. So, um, I thought gravel riding was a great addition to cycling, um, these days. So. I love it all. Done it all. <laughs> That's great. So as um, I wanted to know, what made you decide to take a leap of faith and start your own business and start Jewel's Threads? I think there were a lot of factors going on for me at the time. Um, I had some uh, things going on in my regular professional life that I was feeling a little bit lost and wondering what direction I was going to go in. And um, I also felt uh, or had the realization that my real identity, my creative side kind of got pushed down when I became an adult. Um, growing up, I was always um, into some type of art or artistic thing, whether it was music or design or making clothes. My friends and I, back in high school, we made clothes. I made one of my own prom dresses. So me it was too. always there. <laughs> um, my mom helped me for sure. But um, it was always there. And um, I guess when you become an adult and when you're in a, a studious uh, student and somebody who's very focused on school, you kind of push aside your wants and you go with what you're supposed to do, which is go to school, get good grades, and get a really good job. And so I followed those steps in life and I was for the most part really happy. I had um, a great job in um, custom home design, so computer aided drafting and drawing. So I felt like I really had a wonderful creative outlet, but I had to lose that job unfortunately when the market fell and had to go in a whole different path, which actually taught me a couple of amazing new skills that I really needed in life, which is better communication skills, you know, customer service and that sort of thing. So I think it all came full circle when I guess when I got into my 30s, I realized this is who I want to be. And I want to be somebody who creates something in the world mm -hmm. and not just somebody who goes to a job every day and rides my bike. So <laughs> um, I 
I always loved cycling clothing and picking out something from a bike shop or online that I really liked. And uh, there was such a lack of good product or at least colors and designs and patterns that I really liked. So I decided at some point, I'm like, why don't I just do my own and um, search for a manufacturer and have a great, awesome relationship with the one I'm using. And I get to really have my true creative outlet in life. Great. And as a woman owned and run business, um, do you encounter gender discrimination when securing funding, um, working with vendors and that kind of thing? I really don't. Um, I would say the only part that's been difficult is getting um, more women specific sizing right and down and having that be a real focus um, because um, the norm tends to be a smaller elite athlete rider type of rider. And that is what most of cycling apparel, even women owned cycling apparel is geared towards. And it really is can or can be discouraging for the average cycl female cyclist who is not that size to really look and determine or feel like they can fit in with that brand or that um, that outfit. So that was something that was extremely important to me. I felt like was also missing in the market that um, we really needed to have was clothing that made every cyclist feel amazing and actually look amazing and fit amazing at the same time. And it definitely does because a friend of mine actually bought this kit that I'm wearing um, after she saw me wearing it and we're two, I'm six feet tall. She's like five, four, five, five, and it looks great on both of us. Yeah. Although I have to say I wear it better. <laughs> <laughs> so course. what, what advice would you give other women when contemplating starting their own business, either in the cycling industry or some other industry? Um, have a plan, um, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail or afraid that it might be hard. Um, because those are two very real possibilities. Um, you're going to fail at some things and it's going to be really hard, um, but it's so worth it. I wasn't expecting to be quite so enamored by how proud I was when I just see what I've created. And I think for women, that is, could be something that you don't know you're needing in life, is to see something that you are in charge of, you created, and you know you followed through with. Even if you only do it for a short time or it, it meets a purpose in your life for 10 years, you know it's something that you can be proud of and look back on. Um, but I say go for it, um, for sure. Great. So every year you launch two new lines, uh, fall, winter, and spring, summer. Where do you draw your inspiration for these designs? That is such a great question. I draw inspiration everywhere. Um, the very first outfit that I designed um, with the uh, bright pink and the green was from a quilt that I saw. And, um, you know, not everyone sees exactly where every design that I do originates from, but it, looking back, I can say, you know, hilariously that, yeah, that, that was a quilt type of pattern that I saw. And I thought, man, that might look really good on a jersey. Let me see what colors would look great and let me draw it out. So that's what I did. Um, now my design process is a lot more refined and a lot more methodical um, because now I've figured out exactly what I want my designs to look like. I feel like Jewel Threads has a very distinct look and I've been told time and time again from men and women that I know that they will go somewhere and they can pick out a Jules Threads kit and a group ride like that. Yeah. And um, that was definitely something I was going for. And it took me a couple of years, but I got there. And um, so now I, I start with colors. That is where I start with. I start with a palette of colors and I do that also very, in a very specific way, um, not to give away too many secrets, but I have a kind of a formula that I use and um, I go from there. So it makes the design process a lot easier and a lot less stressful when I start out knowing exactly what I'm going to do, how it's going to go, and then it just goes from there. 
Great. I love the matching socks too. I have the full. Oh, me too. <laughs> so I love, you know, we talked about it, you know, having different sizes for different shaped people. Um, so you, you have sizing from extra small to 2XL. Um, what are the key considerations when designing apparel for women and especially women of different body types? Um, the fabric has got to look right on everybody and the way that it falls on everybody. Um, and also the way that the edges of the clothing fit against the skin. You don't want any squeezing. Um, nobody wants that. And from the extra small girls to the 2X, nobody wants to feel like um, their clothing is restricting them. Um, but compression material is so awesome. Um, I've never really worn compression material until I wore my own stuff that I designed. And it was such a game changer in how confident I felt in what I was wearing. So that is um, material is definitely extremely important and the fit. Yep. And I like that the, it's a little longer in the legs too. So you don't mm -hmm. have that mid cut in your leg, the sausage. Yeah. We're not doing um, shorty shorts ever. Um, there's some good reason for that. It only fits one certain body type and um, I'm not out to alienate any anybody out there. And um, it's that is just more of a look type of um, cut and has nothing to do with performance. If you have compression material, you want it to go over your entire quad. So Very it's true. gotta be about performance. <laughs> Uh, so with the pandemic, there's a lot of women who have recently discovered cycling or rediscovered it. Um, what should they look for when purchasing a kit, um, like shorts versus bibs, and also what to look for in a jersey? I would say it's important to find a brand that allows exchanges and returns um, because you're not going to know your true size with a company until you give it a shot. Um, so you should be always looking to buy from somebody that um, can make an easy return or exchange with a size so that you can find what's right for you. Um, I don't wanna say always spending the most money is the end game um, because I think that our my gear is about mid-priced, not the lowest and not the most expensive. Um, but I definitely would shy away from saying that you don't want to spend more than $50 because to an extent you do it, get what you pay for. And the most important part about getting women who are new to riding to stick with it is for them to enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it because you don't even know that your saddle or your, your shorts or your, your new outfit isn't fitting right, it's very possible that you could give up on the sport. So, you know, giving yourself, you know, it's okay to spend the money at first on something that's a little bit higher quality. Um, and it's okay to return something that you buy that you don't feel right about. Mm -hmm. Most companies should allow you to return something that you, that you tried on and that you didn't feel was going to work for you. Good advice, thank you. Um, so what's next for Jewel's Threads? Winter gear, tights? Leg warmers? I definitely want to get leg warmers um, going for 2021, which would be the end of 2021. It's a little bit too late now to start developing that. Um, but we came out with a new winter jacket in December, uh, right before Christmas, and it is amazing. I love it so much. I've worn it on and off the bike. So that was something brand new that we did. And um, Right now, what I'm doing is focusing on all of my designs for 2021, which are almost complete. So be excited to see what you have. <laughs> I know so, everyone is. <laughs> um, you launched Jules uh, Tribe in an ambassador program for the brand. What are you looking for in a brand ambassador? Um, the number one thing has always been and always will be kindness. Um, most women I know who have gotten into the sport kind of have the same story where they started out and they felt really intimidated or they weren't treated really great by the club or the, the bike shop or the new group that they tried to join. And um, it's really important for us as, as veteran riders or, and it's really important for those in my tribe that I expect that they are the ones to 
reach out and to welcome new riders in their area or the, the girl that shows up to the ride who's not on the bike that everyone thinks is the best, um, who isn't wearing the gear that they think is the best or, you know, it's never good to make someone feel as like they don't belong. So that is what I'm looking for, number one, in the tribe is those who welcome women into cycling or help women get into cycling from scratch and um, help them on their journey to fall in love with the sport just like we did. Great. Um, so now where can people find your gear? Um, right now we are strictly an online business. Um, and especially due to the pandemic, we have not been going to any events. So we are uh, www.jewelsthreads.com, real easy. Um, lots of activity on Facebook, social media. I mean, you can always see every, lots of things that are going on there. Real riders, real women in our gear. That's what our, our social media is all about. And uh, the website just shows you where you can get it and, and making it easy to buy. Great. Well, thank you, Julie, so much for your time. And thanks for watching another Sunflowers and Petals video. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and make sure to subscribe and enjoy the ride.